How are we YouTube? George here. Hope you're all well. Happy Monday. And uh, this is my second time to make this video because the first time there was something up with the settings on the camera. I'm going to turn off these lights because it's driving me insane. I'm going to revert back to me video camera guys. And uh, that'll stop all of that. So... Uh, hasn't been much videos for me of late, because uh, I've been very busy, a couple of 48 hour weeks in work, back to back, so wasn't fit for a whole pile after that, and uh, a lot of work after happening outside, so I'll show you that now in a few minutes, uh, we had a bit of a tidy up here, and as usual there's a load of cardboard to go, and um, it never ends does it? But we went over to see a friend of mine, Eddie. Uh, he's about half an hour away from me. And he breaks bikes and sells bikes and stuff like that. So we got some stuff off him yesterday. We got these nice funky uh, grips. It says GSXR on them. So uh, got them. Got switch gear. I had a left hand one, but the indicator switch was busted. So he had a pair. So I got the pair. And uh, what else did we get? The fuel cap and key. It's like a slingshot type one, bandit type flush fit. Now that doesn't fit this tank, but I have a bandit tank up in the attic. Um, that I, the plan is I'm going to cut the top out of this tank, cut the top out of the bandit tank, and we'll weld the two of them together. But while the tank is open, I'll have enough room to get my hand in and clean it all out and uh, we'll fill it with vinegar and all of that stuff and um, then we'll get that two part epoxy stuff that you can line the inside of the tank with uh, so while it was over with Eddie I got a rake of other stuff um, bits that are kind of getting awkward and it's saving me having to make them really so we have a battery box um, so that's handy we got a rear caliper off him uh, but this one, we thought it might fit, but it doesn't, unfortunately. Um, we've got a starter relay and all the wires for that. There's the other switch here. We'll keep that for spares. We've got a horn. And Eddie is getting in uh, a GSX-R soon. That was it's just kind of a, a mild street fighter, but he's going to put it back to standard. So he had a loom there, but he said... If I didn't mind waiting for a couple of weeks and he'd hold on to the to the complete loom he had and he'll probably use that on this Street Fighter that's coming back in and I'll end up getting the loom that's on the Street Fighter. Now it will suit me because the loom will be all kind of chopped up so um, that's what I would end up doing anyway so um, it kind of worked out grand. Uh, all these, the switch gear here, all the leads is still there. There's the connections for the horn, you know, everything's there, uh, brake light, you know, all the plugs are, are, are on them, so um, that's quite good because we're going to try and have all the plugs and sockets and stuff will be in under here. And we're going to try and close up this section of the frame here, you can brace it in uh, just to make it stronger. Now, um, on the tailpiece, I was thinking of using this Katana one. As you know, this thing's in shite. It just cracks everywhere and it's, you know, all the mounts, a couple of the mounts broke and the ones that's there is cracked and... Now, I could fix it, but look at that. A couple of bits of metal and, and it all cracked again. And if I fixed that and had it on the bike, like, the, you'd end up with quite a lot of filler in it. And if I had that on the bike and it cracked again, I'd go absolutely berserk. So I have this other tail here, I bought this uh, on Marketplace a while back and we're going to use that so we'll, we'll chop all this nonsense off it here and um, we'll end up then that it's going to give us pretty much the same effect uh, that we're trying to achieve. So subframe soon, I know I've been saying that for a while but it's coming, it's coming and it'll feel like a bike then. So happy days. Uh, oh yeah, what else did I get? I got these on eBay last week. Got these idiot lights. 
if you're not used to the world of motorcycles, 88 lights are what we call uh, your warning lights. So you can see there, indicator, oil, low fuel, side stand, neutral, high beam, and right turn. I think this is off a Honda ST1100, and you know, the guy didn't have measurements, so I, took, I just took a chance, and the plan was I wanted to put that across here under the clocks, across here. Um, they kind of fill up that this gap here. There's way there, uh, some somebody said uh, they seen the picture. Oh yeah, the, the clocks are quite far forward, but the lights I want to use, you know, they're they're going to be like here. They're quite big, and there'll be two of them. So I set the clocks out so you won't have the lights sticking way out in front of the uh, the clocks, which would look stupid. So when you're building something like this, you're you're trying to think as far ahead down the road as you can. So basically what I'm going to do is, um, all the little sections in this, the little coloury plastic sections, um, I took this asunder the other day, and they all come out, they're just like little uh, square pieces of plastic. So we're going to make our own housing that will fit under the clocks, and uh, we'll make it out with some aluminium or something like that, and make it that I can fit all them in, and... Uh, we'll make it that it's a perfect fit under the clocks and kind of close up that hole around the ignition where the ignition is going to go. I was going to put the ignition on the side of the frame but I think I'll just use the the ignition holder that's here and we just have a cover then that you know goes around all this just to cover up all this uh, the, this stuff here. So uh, yeah, be grand. And uh It'll look nice and neat with the with the lights under, you know, they'll be just under the clocks there. We'll make it to fit, you know. So it'll be grand. Um yeah, so quite a lot of work happened outside over the last couple of weeks. We'll go out now and have a look. So you can see here all the plastering is done. So that's all plastered now and finished. The the back wall that's in the the garden behind that's done. I'll put a picture of that here. And this is all plastered here. And then we put in this uh, it's like a raised flower bed. So what we're going to do here is I've done this today. I've just dug this out here. We have to level up all the garden because it's very low down in this corner. So what we're going to have here is like a little four inch square section of concrete we'll say. And I'm just going to run it down along there. So when you're cutting the grass the wheel of the moor can just ride on that. And uh, then we have to fill all that up. And we'll get some nice plants from the garden centre for that. Uh, we put in some more lights in the soffit here. Uh, little flush fit LED jobs, one there, one in the middle, one in the end, and then I came along after, and I put I put one there, and I have one in the same spot the other side. And we're going to make a new gate so at some stage during the summer, and it'll be the full height. And those lights there. Those three lights, they're coming down. Those two lights will come off of there. And we are going to replace them. The two on the front of the shed, we're going to get two of these. These are a Robus fitting. I forget the name, I think it's a Robus Tara or something like that. They're not cheap, but they're stainless. They're IP65, so completely waterproof. And that one is there since well before Christmas and there's not a bother on it. So they do a version then as well where it's just, it's like half this, so the light just comes down. So there'll be three of those. There'll be, you see the wire sticking out there? So all the wiring was put in where we doing the wall, the blocks. So there'll be one there. There'll be one there in the middle. And one up there up the top. And then there'll be a photo cell on the wall up here. And that turns the whole lot on uh, when it gets dark. 
I have a temporarily wired in up here. This is a bird trying to make his nest in here, so let's get a new uh, cap for that. So there's the photo cell, just turns them on as soon as it gets dark. I have one of them on the, I have the same lights out the front, so I have one of those out there. So just trying to get it all done, that we can enjoy the garden for the summer. Be lovely just to get someone in to be able to, you know, do it all, but like, <laughs> you'd be talking a serious amount of money there. So it's looking well now. The garden got destroyed when the, the plastering was going on because it was so wet. And um, if you walk in this garden at all, it's always been like this from the time we moved here. It's the big problem is that the gardens in the houses behind are like 18 inches higher than here. So all the water out of their gardens is draining through the wall and um, coming in to this side. But look, once you don't walk on it, it'll be grand. So we get all leveled up and get all the little bits of cement that's left in it out. You know, stuff got spilt and shit like that. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, there's some radio stuff here that will get finished over uh, the next course of a uh, couple of months and get all of that out of here and back to its, back to where it has to go. Let's take a little drink, getting thirsty. Oh, that's nice. And, um, the mother and father of all tidy ups is going to happen here then. Um, there's awful lot of stuff going to go to the dump. There's just shite everywhere. You know, like I must have four or five keyboards and uh, up there and computer stuff. And I, I'm just a fucking hoarder. That's all there is to it. I keep that now. That'll come in handy. Uh, bike stuff there. A couple of mud guards. Oh, that's something else I got. I have um, I'm going putting this. This is a mud guard off a of Super Four. The little CB400, the Jap import. And I had one of those here a few years ago, before I started YouTube really. Uh, this one is cracked, but we're going to we're going to use I have one of these on the way. Um Honda dealer up in Dublin, they had one that were breaking, so got the mud guard. Uh, we'll make a few modifications to it that it fits. And uh, make a little mounting system. Uh, the reason I want to do that is when you use the standard ZXR mud guard, it covers all this. And I know the idea of that as well is to protect the fork stanchions and the whole lot, but I want I want all that to be exposed, that you can see it all. So um, that's why I'm going with that mud guard. It looks quite well on it, it suits it. Nice and neat, you know. So, other than that, uh, not much else to say and uh, that's where things are for the moment what a brand new lens up there a brand new tail lamp lens for the for that light I have down there the tail light picked that up on eBay from Germany and uh, yeah I, I started a new group on Facebook for lads in Ireland for parts uh, for bike parts there's a couple of hundred I think there's 250 in it now so far. I'll put a link to that in the description. It is only for people in Ireland. And if you have parts in your shed and you want to sell them, you can join the group, pop photographs and sell the bits. Because lads, I tell you, uh, you know, to the guys in the UK there, since Brexit happened, it has just completely fucking killed eBay. Um, getting stuff over from, from England to here. It's done. It's not happening anymore because anything you order, like the those lights there, I think I paid. I, I paid eighteen pound for the lights and whatever the shipping was. I think it was another ten or twelve. And when it got here, like I paid that and the fees and everything on on um, eBay. And when it got this side, I got a text from the postal service here on post. I had to pay another fifteen pound. Uh, the, I think it was 17 euros or something like that. Uh, import duty and excise and handling fees. So, buying stuff from the UK now on eBay, it's done. Won't be happening with me anymore anyway. Um, so I came up with this idea of 
creating this group it's only for parts and um, as I said I'll put a link in the description and if you're here in Ireland and you're into messing around with bikes and you have a load of stuff lying around your shed and you want to flog it and make a few bob out of it uh, you're more than welcome to join the group and do that and buy more stuff that you don't need out of the money so I have a few bits here I'll end up putting on it now that FZR front end that I had on this bike initially will probably end up on it and a few other bits and pieces so happy days okay i leave it there i've rambled on for far too long as it is hope you have a nice week and um i think the weather is to turn to shit this week it's supposed to get real cold or something but um yeah okay so have a good week don't work too hard and we'll talk to you again soon all the best